Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Havergal's Junior School Open House for 2021. Um, we're delighted to have so many parents who are joining us today. Uh, we will give it a few minutes while we let everybody join into the webinar. We've got about 100 families who will be joining us today, so this will take a few minutes. But my name is Maggie Houston White and I oversee the admission process here and I'm delighted to be here with my junior school colleagues to tell you about our junior school, our program, and of course, uh, the people who are so valuable to, to Havergal. My colleagues, uh, Brittany Coleman, Usha Shan Magathasan, and uh, Tatiana Bidiak, who are representing our faculty today. We have Kate White, our head of the junior school with us and our principal, Katrina, uh, Katrina Sampson, and our associate head, Lindsay Norberg. So we're just gonna give it a few more minutes as we let everybody join us. Um, I'm delighted to, uh, when I had a look at the registration to see we've got families from all over the globe joining us today. So I realized I said, good morning, but good afternoon and good evening to those of you who are in um, overseas and to our, we have a few families joining us from out west. So a very good early morning to you. Um, also delighted to know we've got a number of current families and old girls on this call today. So a welcome back to our old girls who are joining us and a special welcome to uh, new families who are looking at Havergal for the first time. And uh, Emily, I know you and I had a look and, and we're so delighted with the number of families who are joining us today for the open house, but are also joining us on Friday for our uh, campus tour. So that we're not able to invite families into our classrooms this year, we have found a unique way to let families visit our campus, have a chance to speak with our students uh, and have a peek behind the walls of Havergal through the magic of QR codes. So we're looking forward to a great event on Friday as well. Well, our numbers seem to be leveling off. We've got a, a great full house today. So thank you to everybody for joining us. For those of you who've just joined us, my name is Maggie Houston White and I am delighted to have you here at our junior school open house. Thank you to everybody who submitted questions in advance. That's really helped shape what we are speaking about today. And the number one question we got was, what makes Havergal different? And I really think today we'll answer that question for you because it's not one thing that makes the magic that's Havergal. It is the program and the thoughtful way we look at teaching and learning at well-being. It's the people, and of course, it's the place and our beautiful 22-acre campus. So I'd like to start by introducing our principal, Dr. Katrina Sampson, who I appreciate you making the time for us this morning. I know you've got a very full day today, um, but I'd just like for you to say welcome and a few words to our guests this morning. Thank you, Maggie. Um, and thank you so much for all of you that are joining us today. As Maggie said, my name is Katrina Sampson and I am absolutely thrilled uh, that you're joining us today to explore our junior school and our junior school program. As principal, my role here is to provide strategic leadership to the Havergal community, uh, to work closely with our board of governors and the senior, senior leadership team, including the head of the junior school to provide students with an exceptional learning experience. One of the things that I hope you take away from today is the absolute joy that emanates out of our junior school. The focus on nurturing curiosity, kindness and courage is a central focus for our teachers and staff here at the school, and they love what they do. They are passionate, creative, and they simply love working with our students. So today, I hope you ask lots of questions. Please follow up with our fantastic admissions team. Um, and as you explore that, explore that joy of the junior school, um, as Maggie said, we hope that you can also, those of you that are nearby can come join us on the 22nd for an outdoor um, interactive tour. Thank you so much for considering Havergal for your child's education journey. And we really look forward to sharing more about our school um, and more about our program with you today. Thanks so much, Katrina. 
And Katrina has already become a, a highlight for our junior school students. She's all, often at uh, drop off and pick up. And I know the, our students are keen to share their day with her. So um, our junior school parents who are on the call, I know she's a very familiar face to you already. Um, I'd also like to introduce today uh, Lindsay Norberg, who is our associate head of school. And again, she works closely with our junior school faculty. Thank you. Good morning. As Maggie said, my name is Lindsay Norberg and I am the Associate Head of School. My role, amongst many things, but one of the central parts of my role is to work closely in particular with the Head of Junior School, Head of Middle School, Head of Senior School, the Head of our Boarding School, to build a JK to Grade 12 program that is very cohesive. The program that we're building really focuses on developing students who live our portrait of a graduate. And, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about this, but then when you get to meet our junior school faculty, this will really come to life because even our youngest learners are really starting to build the skills that they need to be these graduates. So to think about students coming to Havergal and being able to leave when they are globally minded, self-directed, flexible, adaptable, able to think forward to the future, inspired to action, leaning into empathy, lead with integrity, and really navigate our digital world. In order to do this, one of our key focus is well-being. And we see well-being as the wraparound to our entire academic program. What is well-being though? At Havergal, well-being is really about developing a positive sense of self, spirit, and community. And we experience this when our psychological, social, emotional, and physical needs are being met. At Havergal, well-being is really relational, and Maggie highlights that when she talks about the relationships that students develop with our teachers and their passion and energy that they have for, the, for, our, for our learners here at Havergal. This well-being program though really needs to be supported with equitable practices and really a respect for our diverse identities and strengths. And again, you're going to see that highlighted in our junior school program as well. We see student well-being as a very clear focus as balancing well with our academic program and student engagement. Each of these aspects, they influence each other. A student who is feeling well and able to flourish also will have gains in their academic program and gains in their ability to engage in our program here at Havergal. It's holistic and it's really nourished by a student's developing of their self so that they can navigate their studies and life pursuits. It isn't about clearing the path and making sure that there are no challenges for students. It's actually about enabling students to have challenges that are appropriate for them and that they can learn to use their tools and resources to navigate these challenges. We see it as a bit of a seesaw, a teeter-totter. There are challenges in front of students and they have tools that they're able to use to navigate these challenges. So we want to be there to support them as they navigate life's ups and downs and really develop the confidence to know that they they can overcome these hurdles. It's a pleasure to see you here this morning and I, I really want to pass this back to Maggie and the opportunity for you to hear about how this is played out in our junior school because there's very clever thoughtful work going on in these junior school classrooms at the moment. Thank you so much Lindsay and it's my pleasure now to introduce the head of our junior school Kate White and I when I think of Kate and her leadership um, I know she'll be talking about our values and Kate really lives our values and and when Katrina speaks about the joy that's really what Kate works to build within our junior school is the joy within our youngest learners so I'll hand it over to you Kate. Thank you so much Maggie. Um, it is my absolute pleasure to be here with you this morning. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us. Today is really an opportunity for you to meet some of our teaching team, to learn more about the Haverhill community, and to really start to understand the ways in which we work together to support each child's academic, psychological, social, physical, and spiritual well being. We recognize that for some of you, this could be the beginning of a 14 year journey, which is amazing to consider. 
and that you are here because you were really thoughtfully considering what might be not just the best fit for your child, but also for you as a family. And that's really important uh, to us at Havergal as well. We have a very, very strong sense of our mission and our values, and it's important for all of us um, that we are cohesive in that. As someone who had the opportunity to attend an all-girls school from the first to the ninth grade, I know firsthand the benefits of an all-girls education. My teachers and my administrators supported me from the time I was very young in developing and growing into an individual who was confident and secure in my ability to participate and to contribute to ask questions and to learn from my mistakes, which in fact is often where the best learning takes place. And it also taught me the power of being part of a larger team with a common set of values. Havergal has been an independent girls school since 1894. We've been doing this a very long time. And our mission continues to be to prepare young women to make a difference and to take on an ever-changing world with confidence and resilience and global mindedness. And it is our supportive and stimulating environment that gives these students the skills that they need to lead with purpose and to thrive no matter where their journey takes them. So if your child does in fact come to Havergal, she will absolutely be gifted with an incredible academic experience delivered by teachers who, as um, both Katrina and Lindsay said, are experts in their field, uh, who are passionate and who provide rich and engaging experience, providing feedback that's specific and challenges your child to do their very best. This is a community that is deeply rooted in our values. Our students have courage, compassion, inquiry, and integrity. And these are the attributes that we want them leaving the school with. And as head of the junior school, my job is to work alongside this incredible team of teachers, as well as the other administrators throughout the building to make sure that these values are nurtured and developed within an academic and co-curricular program so that they don't just have the foundational academic skills that they need to be successful, but that they also comfortably possess the self-confidence and self-knowledge to thrive. So on a very practical level, what does this look, sound, and feel like? Well, as I can attribute from being outside every morning, it looks like students who run into school each day and skip through the hallways, it looks like students regularly putting up their hands to share their thoughts and ideas and ask questions. It looks like your child acting as a house leader as they move into grade six, planning and organizing community events. It looks like children eagerly trying out for school teams and showing pride in their green and gold. And it looks like a thoughtful and deliberate transition program not just between divisions, but from grade to grade, so that your child is known throughout their time at the junior school. It sounds like lots of laughter at recess as our students enjoy their time together. It sounds like music drifting through the hallways as our students compose and produce their own songs in class. And it looks like, it sounds like students from JK to six confidently delivering messages in prayers, and playing music for walk in and walk out. And finally, it feels like a community where it is okay for a student to make a mistake because they know that they are cared for and that they will be supported with opportunities to grow and learn. It feels like a place where our families trust that the administration and faculty and staff are always working in the best interests of your daughter. And ultimately, what it feels like, what it should feel like, is that your child belongs here and that you absolutely made the right choice in choosing Havergal for your child. I have no doubt that you will find today incredibly informative, but I also hope that it provides you um, with some of what you need to make the next decision about your child's um, school. 
I invite you to listen carefully, to ask lots of questions as you think about how Haverhill might be a place for your daughter to be her very best self. It is now my absolute pleasure to introduce you to one of our fabulous kindergarten teachers, Ms. Usha Shanmugathasan, who will walk you through how our two-year kindergarten program sets the foundation for a Haverhill education. Thank you, Usha. Thank you, Ms. White. Hello, everybody. My name is Ms. Usha Shanmugathasan, and I am a senior kindergarten teacher at Haverhill College. And today I am truly delighted and honored to speak to you about the kindergarten program at Havergal College. Before we begin, I would just like to say that the images that you will be seeing in this presentation have been carefully chosen to represent Havergal College at its best while going through uh, some very unprecedented times. So you will see a mix of images pre-COVID, from hybrid remote learning and what daily life at school looks like during COVID. We wanted to highlight the resilience of the, of the college and that even during these times, our spirit and academic integrity continues to persevere. Our kindergarten program here at Havergal College is a two-year program, as Ms. White said. The first year is the entry into JK, and then the cohort moves together into SK their second year. Our program is based on the image of the child as one who is capable and confident and honors who they are as individuals and who they will become and how they will contribute beyond the walls of Havergal College. We see our students as the youngest leaders in the junior school with incredible knowledge and potential. And thus our program is designed to meet each child exactly where they are and supports their growth in a developmentally appropriate way. Everything from our classroom environment to our direct instruction to the documentation of learning occurs through an asset-based lens. The question that we as educators reflect upon in the design and the delivery of the program is, why this learning for this child in this way and at this time? Maggie, next slide, please. So we follow the Ministry of Education program for kindergarten, which is a very rich and thoughtful program that is enriched based on the resources, both material and human resources that are available to us and contextualized to support each learner. The program uses both intentional play-based approach and an inquiry stance as the pedagogical approaches to teaching and learning. So intentional play-based learning is something that I often say to our families, and it, it uh, creates different sensations for different people. And so I really wanted to highlight the spectrum of play for you. And so as you can see on one end of a spectrum uh, of learning is the didactic, highly structured classroom. So it's teacher-led instruction, uh, very scripted with little, little or no play. This was the experience of schooling that I had growing up. And it is an experience in which I thrived and did quite well because it did meet my needs. However, we do know from research that it meets some of our students' needs, but not all of our students' needs. On the other end of the spectrum is often what I think um, people conjure up when they think of play. You know, the uh, fun, rough and tumble, basement type play with lots of bin toys that are getting dumped everywhere and in chaos. And so that's also not um, the characteristics of a highly effective classroom. What we're really looking for is the sweet spot in the middle that's highlighted in yellow. So it's a balance between child initiated play and a playful classroom with focused learning. So the teachers acting as a guide and a facilitator um, they're watching what the students are doing, they're uh, taking notes on their self-regulation and their behaviors and their interests, while also putting in the direct and explicit teaching that's going to take them along their continuum and their developmental journey. Maggie, next slide, please. Play is also extremely important for self-regulation and well-being. So self-regulation um, in its simplest form is how we respond to stressors. So how do we identify our emotions? And when a stressor comes into play, how do we then respond to that? And how do we become calm and alert so that we are ready to learn? A simple stressor is I didn't get enough sleep. 
So a child who doesn't get enough sleep and that comes in the morning is then going to have experiences that maybe compound that. So uh, a friend didn't share a material or the writing task was too hard. So it's really important that we understand where children are in their sort of well-being spectrum and why we honor play is that it's their ability to sort of regulate their emotions with their classmates and in the environment and with the educators. So play is extremely important not only for academic development but also for their self-regulation and well-being which is why the program at Havergal College honors an intentional play-based program. Maggie next slide please. One of the things at Havergal College that you will see throughout the junior school is the environment. Um, and we very specifically design our environment to act as a third teacher. Play is a child's work and our environment is created to support and extend student learning in developmentally appropriate ways. Just as stethoscopes and scrubs are tools in a healthcare professional's toolkit, blocks, light tables, gems, with an air rods are tools in every kindergartner's toolkit, allowing each child to develop their curiosity and provides her the ability to represent her unique view of the world. The environment and the teachers act as guides and facilitators, allowing, allowing for the most wonderful play opportunities to emerge. Maggie, next slide, please. You will often see play and inquiry emerge through our projects, sometimes sparked by the students' interest or sometimes by a provocation that we have placed in our classroom. So this is actually ongoing in our classroom right now. Uh, my teaching partner and I, Mr. Webb, uh, uh, had noticed that the children were really interested in building, they were stacking materials. So we thought, we'll just put out some small materials for the students to see what they do. And we're like, maybe they'll build cityscapes, we said laughingly. And then they did. So they started building an SK city. They started building buildings in their city, things that they're noticing, everything from the Hogwarts hospital to the middle picture is a mobile restaurant. I mean, I don't know about you, but I could definitely use a mobile res restaurant at this point um, to backyards and pools and all these wonderful things. And Maggie, if you go to the next slide, you'll see how we're documenting the children's thinking. So their buildings are going up and it's going up on our bulletin board where children are going back and reflecting on it and thinking, what else does the city need? Now, if we just let this go here, the script of the play doesn't change. The children are going to keep building the same types of buildings and the narration is not going to change. However, because it's an intentional play-based program, as educators, we now look at this and we say, oh, where are we going to go next? And a wonderful opportunity emerged during our Harvest Festival when we talked about um, collecting food for our communities and the food banks and why that might, why that might be necessary. And children have now are thinking about food insecurity and what that that means and how do we get food out to our community and who needs that food so their play has sort of shifted there so you can see how the play really connects children to their outside community while also really developing rich um, spatial skills language skills they're writing about it they're asking questions and they're really connected to their community uh, Maggie next slide please so kindergarten, as I said, um, really values a balanced approach to learning. We value a balanced approach to learning because it honors both emerging student interest and explicit instruction. Because of our unwavering belief in the potential of each child, we offer a comprehensive and research-based literacy and mathematics program that not only sets up a strong academic foundation, but allows children access to their world in a rich and complex way. We integrate STEM and coding, the arts, in order to bring these subjects to life. We are also very fortunate to have an early intervention approach to teaching and learning that ensures that every girl's academic and social emotional needs are cared for in her kindergarten years so she has the strongest possible best start to her school career. When our students leave senior kindergarten, they enter grade one with the academic skills to thrive, but more importantly, with the passion and curiosity to learn. We are so proud of our students and kindergarten at Havergal College 
is truly a magical place to be. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to Ms. Tatiana Bidiak, one of our incredible grade two teachers at Havergal College. Thank you so much, Usha. So like Usha mentioned, I'm currently teaching grade two at Havergal. I've been at Havergal for 17 years and I've loved every minute of it. At the heart of my teaching style is really connection, honesty, openness to new ideas, a positive outlook and a flexible approach. And I hope in the next few minutes to address how these traits are not only celebrated, but supported and encouraged at Havergal. So when Maggie asked me to present, to present in a forum such as this, there are always so many ideas running through my mind because I want to share it all. I want to share all the incredible learning and growing that happens in the building each and every day. But in the interest of time, I have chosen three areas of focus and connecting to kindergarten's explanation of the environment as the third teacher, I will speak to the importance of building community and relationships and enculturating thinking dis dispositions. Then move on to our academic program and learning skills and conclude with a snapshot of our well being and DEI program. The primary years are really a time of huge growth and development. We utilize the foundation that the students have acquired in kindergarten to continue to deepen their learning and support them in their social emotional development. We aim to create powerful learning communities that are creative and safe, where students feel comfortable and aren't afraid to ask questions and share their thoughts. A space that motivates and fosters a mindset where questions are more important than answers. We ensure that our environments provide space for diversity of views, people, personalities, their ideas and stories all form part of the learning environment and allow us to understand different perspectives. This past spring, I had the opportunity to revisit my own professional development roots at a Cultures of Thinking in Action workshop. And as a teacher and as a parent, I learned and was reminded of many valuable lessons. Classrooms should be places where students are invited to think. Prioritizing such dispositions as open-mindedness, seekers of truth and understanding, being strategic and skeptical. Many parents and teachers alike have asked, but which of these characteristics are the most important? And according to the work done at Harvard's Project Zero, the answer is curiosity and metacognition. Susan Engel says that curiosity is the engine of learning. And the metacognitive piece comes from really being self-aware, reflecting on monitoring and directing one's thinking. So here are a few examples. As teachers at Habergal, we make sure to provide time to explore topics in depth and to formulate thoughtful responses. Modeling, where thinking is discussed, shared and made visible. And we want to ensure that we are using a vocabulary for describing and reflecting on thinking, providing opportunities for interactions, reflecting a spirit of ongoing collaborative inquiry. This part has been tricky these past few years as we have tried to rework many of our collaborative routines and protocols. Now, Maggie, I think I've forgotten to ask you to switch the slide, but I think we're on to the next one. There it is. I know parents, um, you probably love seeing pictures and we love sharing them as well. So one concrete example of walking the talk uh, would be what we post on the walls. So if we are always just putting up their finished polished pieces, they believe that this is what we value. So it's important to also put up the messy part of learning, the process, the journey of the learning along the way. Next slide, please. So our academic program um, and our learning skills, we really do make it a priority to understand each student as an individual and as a learner. We continue encouraging our students to develop an understanding that we're all constantly growing and learning. It's the concept of, I can't do this yet. A mindset that allows students to believe in themselves, persevere, make mistakes and understand that learning actually happens at the point of struggle or challenge. Through our literacy, math and investigative research curriculum, we have the opportunity to ask questions, use manipulatives to get a deeper understanding of a tricky concept, experiment, 
share ideas, theorize, and revise these theories once we gain more knowledge. Grade one in particular is a time where we see huge growth in reading and writing skills. Students are excited about this and start to pick books of interest. Many can't wait for writers workshop to dive into writing their stories. So we are explicitly teaching skills such as phonics, grammar, spelling, comprehension, but at the same time, we are nurturing their love for literacy. In grade two, I wanted to share um, an example where we've just implemented what we call author's chair. And it's an opportunity for the girls to share their writing. But we've also incorporated a layer of feedback into the process. So when they finish sharing their writing, they're very excited to ask um, their audience for a warm hug, which is our way of um, receiving some positive feedback. What did we love about your writing? And then they're getting more comfortable and confident asking for that cool breeze, which is the suggestion for improvement. How can I make my story even better? In math, you may see whole group lessons, independent learning, math journals, problem solving, exploration, and hands-on thinking using manipulatives. We are also incorporating number and data talks to inspire flexible thinking in math and have placed a greater focus on mathematical mindsets. So with the growth in their learning, we usually simultaneously see a growth in their confidence. We really want the students to see that it is okay to make a mistake to take a risk, make adjustments, and focus on and enjoy the process of learning rather than just the final product. And so the curriculum becomes the vehicle to teach to these learning skills and dispositions. So the slide that um, you are looking at right now is a grade one example that I wanted to share with you today of the dream bedroom project. So you can only imagine the excitement that this project has created. Um, and some of these pictures are from pre-COVID times like Usha had mentioned. So this is an integrated project that incorporates science, so materials and structures, math and language expectations. The students design, plan, purchase materials, measure, build, and construct their very own dream bedrooms. They had the opportunity to write creative and expository stories afterwards, giving them a real authentic learning opportunity, all the while having way too much fun. One mom told us that her daughter still plays with her bedroom at home. So this is a great example of integrating various subjects and looking at the learning as a kaleidoscope rather than a singular subject, which we believe is much more meaningful. Next slide, please, Maggie. So our well-being and DEI, so our well-being and DEI programming wraps around everything that we do, like Lindsay had mentioned. We spend time ensuring that our students are well equipped to handle their emotions and feelings so they can put their best foot forward in their learning. It is a great opportunity to explore difficult topics and have meaningful discussions about race, class, and gender equality, for example. Here at Havergal, we have timetabled this important programming directly into our daily schedule. So three mornings a week, we spend time exploring topics such as our rights and responsibilities at school, relationship building, exploring our own identities and what shapes them. And this work has been done through um, a variety of ways. We've, um, we do guided play, drama, open dialogue. Um, you'll sometimes see a philosophy for children's circle, mindfulness journals, and finding um, many rich literacy connections. Our ultimate goal is to have our students learn more about themselves and be able to create a toolkit of strategies to deal with various feelings, emotions, and really any situations that arise. And we think this will help build their resilience and lead to actions that will make a lasting difference in their lives and the lives of others today move, um, and moving forward. So I hope this gave you a quick um, yet meaningful snapshot into what we value at Havergal uh, with a focus on the primary years. Um, now it is my pleasure to pass things off uh, to Brittany Coleman, um, who is one of our grade five teachers and blended learning team lead. 
Hi, everyone. As Tatiana said, my name is Brittany Coleman, and I'm currently a grade five teacher at Havergal College. I've taught at Havergal for 12 years and feel so proud to work here for so many reasons. One being that my grandmother is a Havergal old girl. She was my hero growing up, and to get to educate and learn with the next generation of Havergal students feels like the perfect way to honor her memory. I'm so glad you were able to spend some time with us today to hear about everything the Havergal Junior School has to offer. I can really echo so many of the things that Usha and Tatiana said today. There really is a through line here at Havergal, all the way from junior kindergarten to grade 12. With that being said, I will be speaking with you today about some of the pieces that are unique and that make up the grade four to six junior years here at Havergal. First, I will be speaking with you about fostering student agency. This is a goal school-wide, but it does start to take a different meaning in grade four, five, and six. We start to ask parents to take a little step back and allow their daughters to take a step forward. Developmentally, they are ready for this at this age. And so we really wanna help them acquire this skill. We want them to take ownership of their relationships with others, their academic learning, as well as managing their co-curricular commitments. We aim to expose them to a wide range of tools and strategies so that they can be successful in being independent in a way that is true to who they are and in a way that works for them, but also supports their unique needs and areas they may not feel confident in yet. They will begin to think more critically about what works for them and what executive functioning skills do they really need to hone in on to be more successful. This starts to happen in grade four, but it really becomes an area of focus in grade five and six as they near the end of their time in the junior school and get ready to transition to the middle school. So this is all part of their journey of self-discovery and figuring out what they need to be successful as learners. Another important part of student agency is helping the students develop as leaders. We, we really do consider there are a diverse range of leaders in our school, and there are also many ways to show leadership. In some cases, it may be that for more formal in-your-face leadership. A great example of this is grade six house leaders. The entire student body at Havergal from junior kindergarten to grade 12, as well as all staff, are divided into 10 houses. This is a great way to form camaraderie and get to know students across the grades. The grade six students in each house work together with the support of their teachers to take the lead on house in the junior school and house initiatives for the year. This includes leading house meetings, helping to host prayers, and running the sports day in June. This is a really exciting leadership opportunity. And as Ms. White already said, it's one the students really look forward to in the years leading up to grade six. Another place where students really shine is as leaders in prayers. This may be by making an announcement, playing an instrument for walk in or walk out, or by delivering part of the message. Next Monday, for example, my grade five students will be leading prayers on mistakes and how they help the brain to grow. This prayers has genuinely been their brainchild and they have done most of the work to get it ready. They have been filming videos, working in integrated arts to plan the music and collaborating as a class to each read a page from a picture book they want to present. We also recognize that there are different types of leaders and different ways to lead. We make sure to make time and space for those leaders who may prefer to lead in a quieter way and want to take charge behind the scenes. We are there to support the students to help, step, help them step out of their comfort zone. And when they are ready, we help them understand all the ways they already are a leader and the ways they could continue to grow. Next slide, please, Maggie. So developmentally, this is kind of the age where students start to look beyond themselves. They start to hear the news, they hear the people around them and what they are talking about. And so we really take charge on this and we really take hold of it and use it to support us. As students in grade five and six, they're increasingly looking outward to the world. They go from egocentric to looking past themselves and wanting to know about things beyond their immediate experience. We capitalize on that curiosity by connecting to things going on in the world and utilizing that to support what we are learning in the curriculum. For example, the grade five students learn every year about government as part of our social studies program. This fall, we knew we had to take advantage of the federal election. This allowed us to cover government in a much more authentic way. What it led to was a culmination in which each of the grade five students got to cast a student vote, which was done through a program called Civics. And they cast a vote alongside thousands of others, really well-informed students across the country. And it was funny this year, the students were teaching their parents at home and telling them about the different platforms and maybe who they might want to consider voting for. So by connecting it to a real world experience, it was much more authentic for the students. And they're counting down the days till they can legally vote at 18. 
At Havergal College in the junior, grade, junior grades, we, take to, we look to take this one step further. We don't want to just learn about things happening in the world. We want to empower the students to take action and look to make change. A great example of this is our plastic projects within our matter unit. Many of you may know the law of conservation of mass. Matter cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change states. So with that in mind, the students learn about plastic and how long it takes to break down or change states. They then pick a particular plastic to focus on. It may be Lego or plastic bags from the grocery store, and they try to think of alternatives that are better for the environment. We then work toward an action piece. It may be a public service announcement, a letter to a company asking for change. It really depends on the student and their area of interest. We want them, the students from a young age to see and really understand that their voice matters and that they can do something with it. Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, or DEI, is embedded in our well-being program and thoughtfully considered throughout our curriculum. This year, there is a JK to six focus on identity and all of the different hats or ways the students may identify themselves and how these intersect to form who they are. DEI is interwoven through our course content too. It is seen in showcasing books by authors from many different backgrounds, by considering current events and by ensuring that the girls continuously see mirrors into those with similar identities as well as windows that open up and allow them to see beauty and the diversity all around them in this world. Next slide, please, Maggie. A question we often hear as the students are nearing the end of grade six is, will they be ready for the upper school? The answer is absolutely yes, but also parts of it will feel new and challenging too. And as Lindsay said earlier, that's okay. We are going to be there to support them through these challenging pieces. That's part of life and it's an important learning process. That is one of the advantages though, to starting at Havergal College during grade five and six. Your daughter will really become familiar with the school, the expectations and the curriculum covered. This will set them up for success as they cross the bridge to the middle school. And so much of what may feel new in the middle school will feel familiar due to the time spent with us in the junior school. What we do hear frequently from the middle school teachers is that the strong habits and focus on executive functioning in the junior school have set the students up for success in the middle school. The students are well equipped for the academic rigor of the middle school and they're socially and emotionally ready to engage with a wider peer group. The connection and, connection and belonging they feel from having been a part of the junior school community is a huge piece. They are settled in and confident in who they are as Havergal College students. The students come back to visit for years to come as the relationships they have formed in the junior school are so strong. This year, it's waves and hellos from outside the building, but the pride and ties they feel to the junior school still remain. A new addition to our programming and a really nice tie-in to the middle school years is our digital wisdom course. This program runs from grade five to grade eight and is a great chance for the grade five and six students to get to experience a piece of the middle school while also learning how to be thoughtful digital citizens in this world. In short, the junior years at Havergal College are an incredible time and they really help to prepare students for the years ahead. We look forward to welcoming you and your families to, be, to our community. Thank you. And I'd love to have Kate now speak to our co-curricular program. Um, and I'm delighted to see some people have found the Q&A button uh, at the bottom of your screen. I, we do encourage you to add some questions there and we'll get to those at the end of our presentation. But Kate, do you wanna speak a little bit more about co-curriculars in the junior school? Absolutely. And before I do that, I just, um, I'm always blown away by the, the passion and the expertise with which our teachers um, speak. It's a, it's a real honor to work alongside them. So Havergal co-curricular co program is really designed to meet the interests of a wide range of students. And because of that, we do provide a wide range of activities, um, clubs, athletics, performing arts. And especially when children start these uh, co-curricular programs in grade one, we want for them to be trying things that are new, that might spark an interest or might spark a passion um, as they move through the junior school and in fact throughout their life as well. We have a very uh, rich athletic program at the junior school consisting of uh, squads which is for 
our, our youngest learners, really focusing on multi-sports, um, what it means to be part of a team. As our students move into grades four to six, there are opportunities for them to take place, uh, to take part in, um, in squad teams where they learn a specific sport. And then of course, in grades five and six, there are opportunities to um, belong to our competitive teams. And we are so eager for the day where we will be able to um, compete with our schools, um, other schools in the CIS community. For now, our girls are just really building their skills so that they are ready for when the day comes. Throughout COVID, we have integrated clubs and athletics and performing arts in our last period of the day called period five, so that all of our students do have an opportunity to participate in this kind of programming because we know that it is absolutely um, uh, foundational to their experience at um, at the school. And we are also really thrilled that we have slowly but surely been able to offer a broader complement of before and after school activities in performing uh, arts as well as, as athletics. And we are very, very eager to being able to open this up um, even more broadly um, as COVID restrictions um, are diminished. So from choir to band to development of skills in um, a wide range of teams, there really is something for everyone at Havergal. Thank you so much, everyone, for taking the time to listen to us today. Um, to talk just a wee bit more about the admissions process, Maggie, I will hand it back over to you. Thanks, Kate. And we did get a lot of questions about the admission process, which I can understand, particularly during COVID. And so the number one question is, will it be online this year? And yes, it will for the safety of our, of our students and for our applicants. But what we really want families to know is our process is very much mirrors the academic and well-being process here at the school. It's designed to meet our applicants where they're at and designed to allow them to shine. So we have begun our interview process uh, and the interviews will run until February 1st. Um, applicants have uh, in entry years have a one on one interview with a member of the admission team. And during that interview, there is an assessment that we uh, will work through with your daughter, where we look at whether it's critical thinking skills, problem solving skills and creativity. And a number of our applicants online who are looking at junior kindergarten asked, what will that look like specifically for kindergarten? Well, it all depends on the day and all depends on your daughter. As I mentioned, our process is really designed to meet your daughter where she's at. And we recognize, particularly for students entering into JK or grade one, speaking to someone that they've never met on Zoom can be a little intimidating. Please don't worry. We have watched them swim on the floor. We have seen oodles of stuffies. We have found lots of ways to get to know all of our applicants, to get to know what they like, their, um, what they're interested in, to get them to talk about things like letter sounds and what they know about numbers. So our team is expert in having conversations with our youngest learners and getting to know them. And really we want to get to know you as well as a family. What are you looking for in a school? How does what you're looking for align with what Havergal offers with our values and our mission? And how can we together work as partners um, as together we help your daughter become the best version of herself you, she can be? And so really uh, for your daughters, it's really about helping them to understand we're focusing on her strengths. We wanna know what's great about her. We wanna know what makes her unique and that we're here to support her and you as you find the best school for her. I get asked all the time, tell me why Havergal is the best school out there. Well, I can't say that it is, but what I can say is there's no better school when it's the right fit. And our job as the admission team is to make sure you find the right fit for your daughter. And part of that is to allow you to ensure you have lo loads of time to ask questions. There are no silly questions. I've been doing this job at Havergal for over 20 years, and I love when people ask me questions, specifically questions that stump me a little bit. But 
I've had a daughter go through the junior school, middle school and senior school who's graduated. So I can speak to you as a parent. I can speak to you as an admission professional. And to echo Kate's words, I can speak to you as someone who has learned and grown here at Haverhill because of the incredible teaching staff that we have here. They continue, continue to make it a place for all of us to learn and grow. And they really are experts in their field. And so I invite you to continue to watch our webinars and our, listen to our podcasts. They are on our uh, virtual admission site for you. You can watch them at your leisure or you can join them live. You can connect with a parent ambassador. And of course you can connect with us as the admission team. And so with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and open the floor to a few questions here. And I notice that we have some in the chat. So the first question, Kate, I'm going to send to you. And we did speak about prayers as we were, we were talking and, and part of our well-being program. The question is, to what extent is religion incorporated into our curriculum and community? And a question I often hear with that is, what, what does prayers mean? And, and if I'm not religious or Anglican, what does that look like for me? Thank you so much. I'm always so pleased when people ask this question. Prayers at the junior school is really a place of community. Now, the bottom line is Havergal has Anglican roots. The school began in that way, and it still continues to, um, to be influenced by our Anglican background. With that being said, it is also a place that is incredibly open and curious and honoring of the diverse uh, backgrounds of the people within our community. So that looks like sometimes prayers is a celebration of Diwali, where we explain to the children and have people who celebrate um, share some of what that looks like in their families and their homes. As I said, it is a place of, um, of belonging and sharing and a time of deep reflection about what is happening in our school, but also outside of Havergal. Um, when I first came to Havergal, I wondered a little bit about what that would feel like to be in prayers, having not had that experience um, in, my own, in my own personal experience. And I can genuinely tell you that it is um, one of my favorite parts of the day. I think it's a real differentiator for Havergal. At the junior school, we book our end our week with, um, with prayers on Mondays and Fridays. And often the themes that we talk about within, um, within prayers are they're then taking up within the classroom. It's a place to talk about values and character and not just who we wanna be, um, but how we want to be as we operate in this world. Absolutely, Kate. And I would echo that prayers, both in the junior school and upper school, are, are some of my, my favorite times and the topics that we're able to explore as a community and that sense of community, particularly when it's not COVID and you have the entire junior school together to hear a message and to have conversation about it really is fantastic. And through religious education to really deepen understanding of those around us and, and different uh, perspectives, I think is so important. I'm not sure who to ask this next question of. And Lindsay, I think I'm going to start with you. And then Tatiana, as someone who's been here, um, I, we may have been new girls together, um, but as, as someone who's been here for a long time, I'm going to get you to jump in on this. The question is, what is your strategy for teacher recruitment and retention? And the second piece is, and maybe you could speak to this part, Tatiana, is how do you compete with the benefits provided to staff in public schools? So Lindsay, do you wanna start with that? Thank you, Maggie. That's a great question. And you're right. You, know, you can see on this call, there are a number of faculty who have been here for a number of years. And I will say, you, you can hear some of the answer in the things that Tatiana, Usha, and Brittany highlight. Havergal is an incredible place of learning. We are a learning institution. We are learning here together as we work to develop students 
the most incredible young people to live our portrait of a grad. So one of the things that as faculty members we benefit tremendously from is the professional development opportunities that are afforded to us. You heard Tatiana talk about her work with Project Zero at Harvard and this opportunity to recruit faculty who are real learners and want to be you know, experts in their field and be able to apply it. Simultaneously, we're seeking parents to partner with us who want to see us um, experiment and grow and push these young people in the incredible ways that they are able to do that. So it's both about recruiting faculty that um, want to be part of this incredible learning institution and partner with our families and students, and then supporting them in their own professional growth and development as well. And you know, there is a balance between the faculty who have been here for a long time, and I am one of those faculty who came you know, 20 years ago, and because there have been so many opportunities within this institution, and at the same time, recruiting faculty who have had wonderful experiences in, in different places and really bring different ideas and perspectives to Havergal as well. So it's really about a balance of both of those perspectives within our, within our faculty and staff as well. Thanks, Maggie. Oh, Lindsay, you nailed that one. I, I have a lot of similar um, contributions. You know, I absolutely love teaching here. And I, I really say that from the bottom of my heart. And a lot of it is, is that we truly are encouraged here and supported in our passions and our interests. And the beauty is, is that we all have different interests and different passions. And so when you bring us all together as a collective, we can learn so much from each other. Just looking at Usha and Brittany today, I have learned so much from my colleagues. They're inspiring. Um, like Usha's gotten her master's. She's working on her PhD right now. She's continuing to push herself. Sorry, Usha, I had to say it. She continues to push herself um, and be a learner. We want to mirror what we expect from our students in the teachers. And they see that. They see that daily we are learning and we are growing just as our um, students are. And we really, it is a beautiful community um, to work in, to learn in, to make mistakes in. Um, and we feel that and we really hope that our students um, feel that as well. Um, so, thanks, Tatiana. And I think, oh, sorry, go ahead, Usha. I can actually add something to that as um, a former TDSB teacher. Um, I was permanent with the TDSB um, for 10 years. I've also worked in other environments and um, I made the choice uh, to resign my TDSB contract um, and accept a permanent position with Havergal College for many of the things uh, people have said on this call. So um, I am one of those uh, recruitment and retention people on this call. Thanks, Usha. And, and I would say as a member of the senior leadership team, the well-being of our faculty matter to us. We know we are blessed with 22 acres of beautiful grounds that we use every square inch of, but it is the people that make this place. And we don't forget that ever. Um, and our faculty and staff, when I look at the last two years, how they have worked with our students, um, Again, Usha, we're going to call you out here a little bit. When I look at the creativity in which you engaged our youngest learners through COVID, um, when I look at the project work, Tatiana, you were doing with your students to keep them involved and keep families involved. And I look, Brittany, at the girls who have come across the bridge to the middle school this year and how ready and prepared they are despite what they, the learning has looked like over the last two years, it's actually because of the learning. They are so ready. So it really is a place where we do value our teachers very, very much um, and our staff as well. So I'm going to take the next question. It's, uh, there's a couple of in here about the admission process, and I'm going to sort of bundle them all together. Um, somebody has asked how many from, girls from the junior school stay until grade 12? Well, we call uh, our girls who go all the way through the school, whether they started in JK, SK, or grade one, our marguerites, which happens to be our school flower. Um, and each year we have a very large contingent of these students who we do celebrate because they have had a special experience here at the school. Uh, our retention rate, which really speaks to um, the health of a school in an independent school, you want that to look at about 80% of your students are, uh, are staying each year. At Havergal, it's 98.8. 
um, and it is predominantly families who are moving. Um, so students come to Havergal like the staff because, and they stay because they feel uh, that they belong here. They really feel that special sense of community. And so families have asked what our entry years are. Our major entry points are JK when we take in one full class of 18 students. Uh, grade one, again, we take in another full class of students. Grade five, we take in a full class of 20 students. Um, and then uh, we may have spaces in non-entry years. For instance, uh, we have a few spaces in grade four, about four spaces, but we don't do interviews in non-entry years until we know we have a space. And then we will look at a short list because the question that's appeared on here a couple of times, and I know um, we always get asked, is what is the average number of applicants per spot? I don't want to alarm anybody with this number. It's often for every one spot, we have about four or five applicants. However, I need to preface that by saying everybody is looking for their school. And I find, and I've done this for a really long time, is, to, is for families, when they find your school, your school finds you back. There is something in the magic of that fit. So I encourage you to apply, whether it's for an entry year or a non-entry year, if there isn't space in a non-entry year, we can move your application. Um, we can move your application forward. So it really is a, a process that is designed, as I said, to get to know your daughter and you, to find out all about what makes your daughter such a fantastic little human being. Um, and we look forward to working in partnership with you. So that takes us right to 10 o'clock and I promised one hour. So one hour uh, we have hit. Thank you so much to our panelists for being a part of today. Um, as always, it's, it's such a pleasure. Um, and uh, to all of the families who joined us, thank you. Thank you for your great questions. Thank you for your interest in Havergal. We're looking forward to working with you in the coming months. Thank you all for being a part of today. Thank you, everyone.